I'm Pastor Catherine Bowers at Evansburg United Methodist Church with your message for June 21st, Father's Day. I'd like to talk to you today about Father Abraham. Abraham has been called the father of three faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. We claim him as our spiritual father, if not our genetic ancestor. The story of Abraham and his family down through the generations is told in the book of Genesis. Our summer worship series will be about the family stories of Abraham, his son Isaac, his son Jacob, and his son Joseph. And if you think your family has drama, look at the stories of Abraham and his descendants. Everything is there. The highs and the lows, the victories and the defeats, uh, faithfulness and sin, even crimes are committed, uh, jealousies, rivalries, through it all, God has a plan and God is at work. When we meet Abraham in chapter 12 of Genesis, he is called Abram. His name will be changed later to Abraham. Abram lives in Haran. Haran is part of what they call the Fertile Crescent, a good place to live in the ancient world, a part of the Sumerian civilization, which was an advanced civilization. They had agriculture, they had um, trade, they, they had fine arts, and things were going well. And Abram appears to be a person of some wealth because when God comes to him and asks him to move, he takes with him everything he has, the flocks of sheep and goats, the slaves and family members. There's one blessing that Abram and Sarai have not had yet, and that is the blessing of children. And so we can imagine that they must be wondering when this blessing will come to them. The story says the Lord comes to Abram and says, get up and go to a place that I will show you. A place I will show you. Leave Haran. Why leave Haran? Things are going well. Abram is prosperous. But the Lord says, get up and go to a place I will show you. It's not much to go on. A place I will show you. He doesn't know where it is exactly. He's just to start traveling and the Lord will let him know when he's arrived. Now maybe Abram wasn't looking for a new life in another place, but the Lord makes him a promise. I will bless you. I will make of you a great nation. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And the Lord continues and promises Abram that his descendants will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. What a wonderful promise of life, of blessing, of legacy. All of these things are promised to Abram. So Abram obeys the Lord. He gets up and he goes. He packs up his family and all their possessions, their animals, their servants, and he brings with him his nephew Lot. And they begin to travel. We have this picture you can imagine of this caravan of all these people and animals traveling. Go to a place that I will show you. From the story we have, it doesn't appear that Abram argued with God or asked 20 questions. I know I would have a lot of questions. A place you will show me. Where is this place? Does it have a name? How far is it? Is it a good place to live? Do they have good soil there? Do they have wells? Are there other people there? Are there wild beasts? Are there spiders? Are there snakes? I'd want to know it all. These days when we plan a trip, we scope out everything. We go online, we look at all the pictures, you look at the room you're going to stay in. Before you leave, you even can know what color the towels are. Not so for Abram. Abram got up and began a journey because the Lord told them to. They packed up everything and they went. It doesn't mean that he might not have had some fears. 
Will this really work out? Will we run into robbers on the road? What if we get sick? What if we can't survive in this new place? What if the other people don't want us there? It was a risk for Abram to move his family and his possessions. When we look at the stories of great leaders of the world, you always find that they are risk takers. They are willing to do new things, to go to new places and to take risks. They are willing because they have a goal in mind. They have a future in mind. And so Abram took this risk of moving his family, of counting on the Lord. I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. I'm going to trust God for the future. That's what faith is. Faith is saying to yourself, yes, I will do what God asked me to do. And even if that's taking a risk, and I will trust God for the future. Sometimes that takes a lot of courage. God said go and Abram went. The important thing was that he went, not whether or not he had doubts or questions. Faith is about the things that we do, not just the state of mind that we have. It's okay if we have doubts or if we are unsure. What matters is what we choose to do, how you live your life. I've presided at a lot of weddings as a pastor in my 30 some years as a pastor. And I find that oftentimes the bride and groom are very nervous about the ceremony. And you want them to enjoy it. We have this romantic notion that the ceremony will be beautiful and they will uh, be carried away by it. But honestly, sometimes they're just trying to get through it and they are too nervous to enjoy it. So this is what I tell them. It doesn't matter if you're nervous. The important thing is that you got yourself to the altar and when you leave, you're going to be married. And that's the act of love. That's the act of faith that you came. So don't worry about being nervous. It's what you do that matters. Faith and love are evident in the actions we take and the choices we make. God may very well call you to do a new thing or to go to a new place. Or maybe God will not call you to go to a new geographical place. But I guarantee you, if you are living the life of faith, God will call you to do new things. God will take you out of your comfort zone. God does that to us in so many ways. This year, we know what it's like to be out of our comfort zone in the age of the pandemic. We've already had to try many new things that we might not have done otherwise. And we are learning new skills, new ways of doing things. What's important is that we trust God for the future. Abram and Sarah have these promises from God now. And they will hold these promises for quite a long time before they see them fulfilled. Abram and Sarah get up and they go and they travel to the land of Canaan and they stay there for a while. And if you're reading the story and you know how it comes out for Abraham and Sarah, you're thinking they've made it. They got there. They got to the place that God wanted them to go. Let the, let the promises be fulfilled. Let the good things start coming, but it doesn't work out that way. Actually, the road to success is not a straight line, as it almost never is. And they will have side trips, and they will have problems, and they will have obstacles. We're told later in chapter 12 of Genesis that they are in Haran, uh, excuse me, Canaan for a while before there's a famine. And they have to leave Canaan and go to Egypt to survive, to find food. And they have not had any children yet. And they will start to wonder if God is ever going to keep these promises because they're going to have to wait for a while. If you're reading in Genesis 12 and you keep reading, you have to get all the way up to chapter 18 before you get to the birth of Isaac. A lot of things happen in between. I recommend if you want to get filled in, read those chapters. 
before next Sunday. Next Sunday, we will look at the story of the birth of Isaac, so stay tuned. Faith is saying yes when God calls and trusting God for the future. May God give us all the courage to believe on the promises of God. Amen.